If you've seen images posted on the internet, such as Twitter, where it has its own thumbnail image and it's relevant to the blog title or blog content, what they're actually using is an open graph image. Today, I'm going to show you the really powerful feature of Next.js 13 on how we can generate these dynamically so that you never have to make them yourself. They're made by the server. So whenever you make a new blog post, it will be there ready for when you share that post. We're going to use Next.js 13's Create Next app. So let's jump into it. So over here, I have a Create Next app. This is just the standard template when you do PMPM create next app, and this uses the app router. You'll be able to follow along with this tutorial if you're using the pages router API as well. Some things will just be a little bit different, like how you make API routes. So what we need to do is first create our API route. So what we need to do is create a folder called API under app if you don't already have any API routes. So if we go over to this and do new folder, call it API. Underneath this, we will then need to define the path or the slug that we will go to to generate this image. That's going to be new folder OG. And then in here, we're going to need a root.tsx, which is just going to be how we get to this actual root and where the logic sits for that. So if we go new file root.tsx, what we're going to do here is come into our folder. And the first thing we're going to do is import image response. Now, if you're using the app router, this will be from next slash server as it's auto filled in there. However, it is worth noting if you're using the pages router, you're going to want to install a package called Vercel OG. You can do this with PMPM I Vercel slash OG. And now if you're going to import your image response, you're going to want to import it from app Vercel slash OG as well. But as I said, that's only if you're using the pages. If you're using the app router, you're good to go. The next thing we need to do is tell this to run on the edge runtime. So you're going to want to do export const runtime, and that's just going to equal to a string with edge. What this is doing is just telling the server that we want to run this in the edge configuration, and that's what you need to generate an image response. Now we need to do export async function, and this is going to be called get. So if we define get here, this is just saying we're going to do a get request to this API route. And then in here, you're going to want to return new image response. And then inside of here, you're going to want to put some brackets and then another set of brackets as well in here. And then in here, we can draw our element. So for now, I'm just going to do a div and it's just going to say hello inside it. Now, if we go to our root after running the dev server, what we're going to do is pmpm run dev. Now, if we go to our local host 3000, we should see that we have our create next app there. If I just refresh this page quickly, and then we go to our slash API slash OG, you will see that we have a basic image that says hello. Now this is very basic at the moment. So what we're gonna cover next is how you can get some styling going and how you can load in custom images and some emojis as well. Now back in our root.tsx, how can we make this a little more complex so that we can load in some custom parameters such as a title of a blog post and other description elements? What we need to do for that is we need to add a request to the get here. So as a parameter, add request, and that's going to be of type request. If you're not using TypeScript, you don't need that bit. And the next thing we're going to want to do is just make this a little more safe. So wrap it in a try catch block here. So if we do try, and you're going to want to put the return within that try catch block there as well. And then we're just going to catch E being any. And then within here, we're just going to return a new response. And this is just going to be an error message. So in here, we're going to put failed to generate OG image or something like that. And then once that's done, we're also going to need to add a status code of 500 just so that it's nice and knows it's an internal server error there. So next, we need to go and get something from the search parameters. Now to explain what search parameters are, if we have a URL that's something like, let's say, um, API slash OG, and then you're going to have a question mark, which is where the search parameters start. So like this, and then we'd have title equals. So everything here is a search parameter. So how do we access this? So we do const, and then we're going to do object here, and it's going to be search params. So this is the shorthand to get it. And then you're going to need to do equals new URL. And then in here, we're going to do request dot URL. So this is now the search parameters out of that URL. Next, we need to do const has title. So we're going to want to check that this has a title first. So do search params dot has, which is a very helpful function. And then we're just going to put title in there as a string. So this is now a Boolean for whether the title exists. Next, we need to do const title. 
And this is going to be equal to has title. And then if it does, we're going to get that title. So search params dot get and then title. And I'm going to splice this here to let's say zero to a hundred. So this is going to say if the title's too long, we're only going to let it be a hundred. Um, that just makes the image look nice and clean because if you have text going over, it may look a bit messy. Once that's done, we're just going to return a default title just in case it's not being provided. So my website. And we'll leave that. So now we have the title. So how do we use that? So we're going to use that as we would in any sort of basic React application. You're just going to go into your div element where it says hello. So if we go down there and we replace that, you will see that if we replace that just with the curly brackets and then put title in there, that is how we can use it. So if we save that and go over to our image, hit refresh, you'll see that my website has now been loaded in. If we add some search parameters, so if I add title and then just add something like my new blog post, you'll see that it says there my blog on OG images as we typed in to the title on the search parameters. I didn't need those quotation marks. Now, how can we add a bit of styling to this to make it look a bit nicer? So the first thing to note, if you wanna use inline styles, you could do that by just adding the standard style object as you would with React. I'm gonna use Tailwind for this example, but just to show you, if you wanted to use that style, you just come in here, do style, as I said, and then you just do that double curly braces. But for Tailwind, what we're gonna use is a custom thing. Now, if you've used Tailwind, you may be used to the class name to put our Tailwind in. For this, we're gonna use TW. So the image response has a custom wrap around Tailwind to make it work, because obviously this is a generating image, but you wanna put all your Tailwind in a TW prop. So if we go and make this a bit cleaner so we can work with it. So here I'm just gonna format this so it's a bit nicer to work with. In the div, I'm going to come in here and add that TW. And then I'm just gonna add some basic Tailwind to format this. So I'm gonna want it to be a flex box. I'm gonna want it to be flex column so everything's aligned. And then you're going to want a width full and a height full. So this takes up our entire image. And then I'm going to want to center everything with item center and justify center. The next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to move our title into a H1 tag. So if I do H1 here and then move the title within that. And then I'm going to give the H1 some custom classes. So again, that tailwind tag. And then in here, we're just gonna give this some custom classes such as text 3XL. And then also we're gonna want this to probably be gray, let's say in text. So we'll do text uh, gray 900 in this case. And then you could want this to be bold or something. You could do font dash bold. So now if we go look at our image, we should see that it's got that new styling. So there we go, it's centered and it's got the white background as we define in Tailwind. Now, if you want a nicer way to play with these, there is the Vassell image playground. So what this is, if you go to og app, essentially it's a place that you can go and you can see the changes being made to your image nicely. So if we go over there now, og app, as I said, you'll see that you have a load of examples and there's a load of parameters you can play with. Essentially, you could style your entire thing within this application and then you could just copy and paste the code out. It just stops you having to refresh constantly. So if I go look at the Tailwind example, I can copy and paste that because I like the design we've made there. And we can just go back to our root and paste that in. And if we save that and refresh our Vassell OG image, we should see that it's got that styling there, as I said, but you may notice the font isn't in there yet. So how do we get custom fonts? That's the next bit I'll show you. So how do we add our custom font to this? So over in our root.tsx, what we do need to know is that you need the font as a local file. So here I have asset slash fonts and I've added the inter bold font into this folder. So you need to have this local. And what we need to do is do a const font data. We're essentially gonna make a fetch request on this. So if we come into here, we need to do const font data and that's going to equal, as I said, we need to await a fetch. And then in here, we're gonna do new URL. And then in the URL, you're gonna to wanna to put the path to that locally. So for me, that's three levels up, assets, slash fonts slash inter dash bold dot ttf and then you're also going to want to put comma import dot meta dot url next after all of this we then need to get the result of that so dot then 
and then res, and that's just going to be a function. And that's just going to be res dot array buffer, and then call that function. Now with that font data, we need to tell our image response that it's allowed to use this font. So to do that, we need to add some options onto the image response. So after you've defined all of your HTML and JSX stuff here, we need to come after that bracket and we need to add a new object. So in this object, we're going to add a new key called fonts. So in here, if we add fonts, and then in here, if we do an array, and then that's gonna be an object where we have the name of the font. So for the name, we're gonna to wanna to call that inter. So this is how you'll refer to it using the font family value. And then you're gonna want data, and that's just gonna be that font data that we got earlier. And then you're also gonna want style, and that's gonna be normal or italic. Now that we've got that, we can go ahead and use that in our JSX. So go up to where you wanna use it, and you're actually gonna need the style tags for this. So if we do, as you can see here, the style font family, all you're gonna to wanna to do is do style, and then again, you're gonna to wanna to put that object inside of it. And then inside this object, just the font family and the name that you just define. So for me, it's gonna be inter. Now, if we go to our OG image, we should see that font loaded in there nicely. The next thing I'm gonna tackle is how you can render emojis in here because you can't actually use system emojis. There's a couple of emoji providers that they've set up for us. Again, back in our root.tsx, if we wanted to use an emoji like this hand waving emoji, we actually have to tell it what emoji provider we'd like because at the moment it's just gonna be using Twemoji, which will actually look like this one here. But to get started, what you need to do, as I said, is just paste in that emoji. And obviously with Unicode, it will know what emoji you're referring to. But if we refresh here, you'll see that it's actually got that emoji and it is using the right provider, but this may not be the one you wanted. So to change that, you can go down into that config object that we defined earlier, and you can just type emoji. And then you can see the emoji providers we can use. So for me, I let's say we change this to open emoji, save that, and you'll see that the emoji will change to the open emoji style. And there we go, it's changed. If we go back, you'll be able to see the various options. As I said, you'll be able to find them on the website for the one that suits your needs. But again, this is the list here. So blob emoji, fluent, fluent flat, noto, open emoji, and tweet emoji. I'm gonna use tweet emoji. Now, to add our own local images, again, what we're going to need to know is you will need it to be a local. So again, in this assets folder over here, I've got my logo-64x64.png. So I'm gonna to wanna to use this logo in my OG image. To do that, it's very similar to font data. So we go ahead and copy and paste this here. Paste this down and let's say rename this to image data. And then you're just gonna to to change that path to the path to your image. So for me, that's logo-64x64.png. And then we can start using this image in some image tags. So if we go down where we want the image, use the normal image tags, not the next image ones. I'm gonna to wanna to give this a width of 64 and a height of 64, which is gonna suit our needs. And then you're gonna to to put source equals, and that's gonna be the image data that we just made. Now, it could throw an error here because of TypeScript and also ESLint. Um, it may moan that you don't have an alt tag and Next.js may moan that you don't have a next image. There's a couple of ways you can change this. You can stop it for the line. For me, I like to go up to the top of the file and add a few custom things. So if we go up here and paste in these values here, so this is just some ESLint rules to disable those warnings. And I'm gonna disable TypeScript within this file as well. So once that's done, we can save that. And then if we go to our OG image root after those source tags haven't been rendered in and we refresh that, you should see that my logo's there and I've also changed it so the title's rendered in there and you can now move this away any round you like just using your JSX and Tailwind styling. Next thing we're gonna tackle is how you actually get this out into the metadata. Now for metadata, what you end up with is something like this. So you'd export const metadata, and then that'll be a metadata type if you're using TypeScript. And in that object, you're gonna want open graph with images, and that's gonna be an array of the images. Now you'll see here that I'm using this statically. So this is on a page that doesn't take in any parameters. So you may want to know how we do this for a blog post. To show you that, I don't actually have a blog post set up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how we can do this using my personal website that I have set up. I'll link that down in the description below and also the source code to that so you can see that as well. But if I head over there now, I'll show you how we can dynamically render this in 
using the generate metadata function so that it will have your blog post title and any other data that you want from that in there. Now over here in my VS code for my personal website, if we go into the app blog and then I have a blog page for each slug. So the slug will be sort of the title of the blog post. If you see, as we scroll down, my blog is actually using content layer here. But if I scroll down, we'll see the generate metadata function. And that's going to take in params and that's going to be the page params on blog post page props. So that's just going to be the slug that we're going to. So for example, next.js example blog um, with the dashes. And then I have a function, which is the details one, and that's get post from params. So that get post from params is going to go off. And then on my back end, it's going to load in the necessary details, just using that slug for which post we're actually referring to. Now, if you see, we have that const post equals those details dot post. The bit that we're going to be relevant in is this OG URL. So here I define a new URL as the URL of the site slash that API slash OG root. And then we do OG URL search params dot set. So I'm going to set the heading to the post title. So when I set this up, I used heading um, to be pulled in as the post title. I'm going to set the type to blog post as I have this as a little sort of header above the title to show what sort of type of content it is. And then also the mode is dark because my OG image can also be in light mode if you wanted it to. Anyways, once we've got that set up, all you need to do within your generate metadata function is return the object of the metadata. So as you can see here, we have return and I have title, post or title and a load of other metadata. But again, we're concerned with this open graph. So down here in images, again, I have that object and I just do that og.url to string. So it's just going to load in that OG URL as a string with those search parameters in there. And again, you can give it some width and height and you can do this for the Twitter image as well. As I said, we're concerned about this OG URL. This is how you do it. Use the URL, pull that in from, you could pull that in from an environment variable or site metadata. But if we go over to Twitter and paste in a link for something on my blog, you'll see that we get this nice OG image pasted in and it has that title for us. And I haven't had to generate this at all on my own. So that's how you get started. If you have any more questions, do leave them in the comments below and I'll leave some links to the documentation in the description below. Thank you very much.